up everybody, I'm Mickey. Welcome back to the Throttle Channel. Today we've got some amazing content for you from Sydney, Australia. We're gonna be working on this awesome 1100 horsepower R32 GTR. Andrew, tell us what we're gonna be doing today. Well, I've been racing this thing over the last couple of months. I did Hoonigan this versus that. I did our GTR challenge. I did All Japan Day. And obviously you saw it race at GTR Festival on the weekend. Yes. And we went out cruising with it on Sunday. Yes. Uh, a normal person would want a bit of a break after all that. <laughs> nope, I want to get ready to go back to the track and try and run an eight second pass. So we need to give it a check over a service and get it ready to go back into drag trim. Sign me up. Let's go. Let's get rocking. All right, first thing, Mickey, I'm gonna get the air filter off so we can give it a quick clean and make sure it's all good. But the main thing is we need access to this Clearview filter. I use this to basically monitor engine wear and obviously it's done a fair bit of work lately. So mm. we're gonna take a look at that, clean that out, then change the oil. It's really cool how you, you can go from see there. the oil in there. Yeah, it's unreal, huh? Yeah, I've never seen that before. Very cool. All oh. you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You ready for this? So basically, to use the clear view between runs, you can hear all the oil going everywhere. Can you hear that? Yes. So what you do, you see the screen now? Yeah. You can see the screen. So then there's always gonna be a little bit of stuff, but that's all silver. A little silver flex in there, which is more like the kind of material you expect from alloy, but mm -hmm. we're, what we're looking for is actual bearing material. See? Look at that. Wow, that's cool. Man, I might have to invest in one of these. This is cool. And what we're looking for when we go into here on that screen is we're not looking for, there's always gonna be some stuff. There's gonna be a little bit of silicon from mm -hmm. that's fallen out from the, the engine build. There's gonna be a little bits of alloy. But what we're looking for is we're looking for bearing material. The rest of that stuff, that's normal stuff that you'd see in, the, in your filter. What I'm looking for is the bearing material. If there's yeah. bearing material in here, you know then I'm worried. Quite a bit of stuff in there, dude. Yeah, but if you have a look at it, it's all just little bits of alloy, and like, if you, if you might get a little bit of thrust washer over time, but it's like what we're looking for. People don't realize how much of this is in a normal filter, right? You don't get to see. But you don't see it when you take unless it you cut those. open a filter and try and get it all out, which you can't. Mm -hmm. You won't see any of this, but that you might look at that and go, "Wow, there's a lot of crap in there." That's pretty normal for like a big engine like this over, you know four race events. Mm. There's nothing in there that worries me at all because as I go like that, I'm not seeing any of the shiny bronze stuff from bearings. If all of that was bearing material, mm -hmm. I'd be panicking. <laughs> but there's no bearing material. Maybe one tiny bit, which might be a bit of thrust wash away from such a big clutch and launch no, control. I don't think stuff, it is so. actually. I don't yeah. see that. Exactly. That coloration that you would see yeah. from a bearing. There's no, there's no bearing material. This is all very silver. Man, at 1100 horsepower. This engine's been making 800 plus it's pretty heck for nearly two years. Yeah. And it's done about yeah. three and a half thousand kilometers that it's done of street and racing. It's done a hundred dyno pools testing products. I've seen so all like that. It's, it's done a lot of work, so. Cool. But the actual kilometers is not that big. You can even see a little bits of blue from the silicon and stuff like that yeah, still in that. here, so yeah. So basically it's a, just a, a drip tray and the whole idea is if once you tech to go under tens, one of the requirements is to have this tray. So if there's an engine failure, it tries to catch some of it. And it's not flat, it's actually like yeah. you can see on the side, it, it's back up and welded. It actually, ha it actually has to catch fluid. It might not catch all of it, but it'll certainly catch a lot of it if you have a dramatic failure. So it's, it's folded up so it can actually hold oil. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. I have to have it and um, yeah, that's basically what I need. See? The 
Well, it's a little bit. Probably it's sturdy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what we're doing. I need to take a second and remind you guys that the sweepstakes for our S2000 plus $20,000 cash is about to end at the end of the month. Only a couple weeks left. I've got some good news for you though. We've got our Throttle slash Gretty merch collab coming out on June 23rd. So if you haven't already got your entries in, head on over to the site, pick up this dope artwork on this new collab and get those entries in because this car is super rad and I hope I'm handing one of you guys the keys. 10 liters of oil takes a while to drain, unless of course you're at full operating temp and want to burn yourself. <laughs> so while that's draining, nah. I usually just take a little look over everything. Anything that needs a fresh wipe because something has seeped, so that way you can monitor it better at the track, make sure nothing's loose, just have a quick look over, make sure nothing's rubbing anything, nothing's burning or melting. And um, yeah, I usually spanner check these for any yes, exhaust okay. leaks, so, so yeah. Yeah, so ignore the Zestino tires Australia in terms of what we're using. But I obviously want to look after these when we take them to the track, we want them to get wet, we want to get sun on them, nothing. So they're basically the soft compound in a drag radial. If you do too many heat cycles, it can damage it. If you keep it in the sun or get it wet or too cold, like there's, you want to keep it indoors mm -hmm. in a nice temperature, keep them dry. So oh, awesome. we need the covers. Yeah. ET Street R is like the more serious Mickey Thompson street tire. Yeah, we, we run these on the Supra. That's right. So we have the SS, which is more of a actual streetable one because it disperses water. Well, ah. the ET Street R essentially is yeah. just basically by having less tread grooves, you have more contact patch. Right? Well, this like, is what makes it a DOT approved. Correct. The little look at that. Yeah, legal. Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll, legal. It'll <laughs> While we're in here, we're going to go ahead and give Andrew's Brembo brakes in the rear a little bit of a wipe down. He's got a beautiful red coat on him, so some of the brake dust off and see him through his wheels. It's one thing to be fast, but it's another thing to look good going fast. Well, when your car hits 160 mile an hour plus in a quarter mile and you have a habit of like staying into it a little bit further than the finish line, your brakes need to be pretty good. We do have a parachute on the car for drag racing. To be honest, I don't use that at Kudamundra or, or when we do other events like Power Cruiser or Japan Day. So I like having good brakes. Time for a fresh set of pads in this car that are a little bit uprated. So we'll get these bad boys out. I'll show you what we're going to use. So what we've got here is the new pad from DBA, it's basically the new race pad. Uh, we do a lot of work with them, a lot of testing for them, so this is the new compound we're going to put in the car to help me pull up from some pretty silly speeds. Let's go. Serious heat there, boy. Wow, you were due. Hey, uh, yeah. I, um, you're meant to pull the chute, anything over 150 mile an hour. Yeah. In other words, if you've got an actual fast car. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't pull the chute and keep getting in trouble for it. And I've done years of racing without pulling chutes wow. and stopping from sort of like wow. 270 plus Ks an hour. That's some serious wear. Yeah, that's why I like big brakes. If I need a chute to stop, how's it a street car, right? Yeah. That's, that's my attitude. I love Japanese parts and I love the JDM industry and everything it did for GTRs. I mean, 
We might have built the quickest motorsport GTRs in the world in 1991 and 92 with the Group A cars, but Japan mastered the tuner GTR world in the late 90s, early 2000s. But that scene changed and it stopped. Aussies yeah. have taken over. Yeah. You want to build a fast GTR? You put Aussie parts on. You want to build a JDM internet points Instagram car? Well then, use Japanese parts. Use Japanese parts. I'm not saying the Japanese one will be slow or not any good, it's yeah. just... When it's you want to go really, mentality. it's like you want a fast car or you want a really fast car. Which mm. one do you want? You know? yep. So, yeah. me personally, I want a car that makes a really fast car look slow. <laughs> <laughs>
like breathing system, you'll see multiple catch cans, <laughs> multiple lines, multiple oil coolers. Like, it was crazy what they had to do to keep oiling this thing to be able to go circuit racing, but they weren't allowed to go dry sump in these for Group A. And right? what kind of power are we talking on those Group A oh, Back then it's like 600 horsepower and a little bit over 8,000 RPM, but we're trying to rev these things to nine and a half now, yeah. 10,000 even. So yeah. with, over problems even with over 1,000 horsepower. So the problem's even worse now. So Honestly, it just, it just, it just keeps going. Yeah. as you make Correct. the engine more powerful. Look, I just tell everyone this. Do you want to go around corners in a GTR? Yes, then dry sump it. Like okay. just save all of the drama. Yeah. Drama, and there's going to be people out there that go, oh, I've circuit raced mine with a wet sump. Yep, cool. I get you can, but if you want to avoid the drama of just trying to get it right, just go dry some. I'm building yeah. a Group A tribute car right now. I'm just going to go dry some. I'm just going to not waste my time with a wet sump on a car that does laps. If you want to go reliable circuit laps, dry some. Yeah, and we're not going to get yeah. into what a dry sump system is. If you no. guys don't know what that is, just <laughs> we've got a video of that. Yeah. Oh, you do. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. check out Motive Video. They've they've got a whole video yeah. about it. Otherwise, Google it. Um, but for me, with a wet sump. Because I got a billet oil pump from Nido, huge pressure, lots of flow, even with all the restrictors and head drains and everything, it, it would fill a small catch can in one drag run. Wow. But that's why I've got a monster catch can mm. and it returns to sump. So as soon as I finish the run, that's why, you know, as soon as I finish the top of fifth, I don't sort of pull six and keep going, I just put my foot on the clutch. Yeah. Stay in fifth though, because yeah. you can't go back down. Put my foot on the clutch right. and straight away that means the engine revs will drop. It'll go into vacuum, all the oil can drain back away and yeah, obviously returns out of this. So for those people that are worried about oil contamination by returning to the sump, ask yourself this, if it came out of here, why can't it go back? Yeah, I mean- That's, that's, the, that's the reality. And right? the OEM has replumbed into the air intake. Yeah, exactly. So, so like if it came out of the engine, it can go back in the engine. The contamination that you see when someone drains their catch can, that is usually just condensation it's, moisture, it's just yeah. moisture mm -hmm. so you can imagine this can is full of hot oil right and then you turn your car off you leave it outside the air cools down condensation forms mm -hmm. inside and then water builds up in the catch can yep. and then the ethanol stuck in the oil yep. that then separates so before you know it it looks terrible but honestly it's fine we noticed that if you start and stop these without warming them up a lot on e85 it contaminates the mm -hmm. oil but as soon as you get it warm it yeah. just burns off yep so and don't the, stress the the uh, the no warming up thing just escalates that problem correct if you I, I have a theory that every time i start this car i warm it up and drive it so i don't start it move it turn it off right. start it move it turn it off because then that over time is just really bad in terms of contamination for 85 so so if you're just gonna move it out to the car park you just push we it push out, it right? we push it out yeah. and we don't push it because it doesn't drive we push it because i just don't want the contamination so every time i start it i drive it that's cool. It's just, it's just looking after the cars. GTR things. I, I guess a couple of little touches in here that I guess people from overseas that are watching might wonder about. We use a, uh, we do the fuel rails twin entry. So mm -hmm. we actually made it come in from each end and come out in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, that's just for even fuel so distribution. So your feed line is wide off underneath. Yeah, it is. In one side up. And you can see the there's a mechanical fuel pump. Mm -hmm. So that's why you'll notice when I start this car for the first time in the morning, it takes a little bit longer. And that's just fuel getting from the surge tank in the front mm -hmm. coming up through this line to fill up this. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when you've got a fuel pump higher than the surge tank, it can just fall back away. Mm -hmm. So it takes a little bit longer to crank. If it's been running, it starts quickly, but if it hasn't been running. Another little fun fact is when you have one of these and you don't have a vented bonnet, if it gets a lot of heat soak, it can almost evaporate and heat up some of the oh, fuel wow. inside the pump. So it actually like almost gets like vapor lock when it's oh, hot. Man. Because I have a vented bonnet, my car doesn't get it. <laughs> Good. So I've seen some other guys get it, but oh, I don't get it. So. Like that, yeah. so yeah, obviously you can see drive-by-wire electronic throttle body. Mm -hmm. um, that's another little interesting fun fact on this. I use a hyper-tuning inlet manifold. ID 2600 injectors. Um, obviously we need to get a bit of grunt. Yep. We've got split fire R35 coil packs. The reason for that is the R35 coil packs that I had in this car, they've been in the car for like five years. Mm. As you can imagine, they've done some work. Yeah, so yeah. Um, on the weekend, it, I, f I seemed like one of them had just degraded a little bit. Uh. So we put a whole new set in. Um, what else can we look at? G45 1500. Okay. I've dropped it down in there uh, so it doesn't look like a Pro Mod 1500 horsepower turbo. <laughs> <laughs> but I run the smallest rear housing. So I run a, a 101 twin scroll T4, wow. which is actually, the, for this turbo, is the smallest one. But you've been in the car, you've seen how drivable it is. Yeah, yeah, it's very I, streetable. But it, it's super streetable, but at the same time, still makes 1100. Yeah. very efficiently yeah, it's without actually, really leaning on it so quite shocking how nice it drives yeah. well and i did a video a where that has to do with the setup but a little bit also yeah. with the tune and that's right i mean it's a combination of everything this car has always been about the combo not one thing so mm -hmm. 11 years of development slowly means that you get the chance to get every part of it right you know what i mean
about to put this parachute on the back of this R32. And what's really cool is, before we stick this in, look at the roll cage. So the roll cage comes down, ties into the chassis. We've got a Y shape here that comes off of those. And then there's a receiver that is placed underneath the license plate that flips up. Really well thought out design. Slide it in, put the bolt in. It's off and running. How far? Here you go. There you go. So when you race, now you pull that pin out and it's armed and then now the lever will work. We have what, parachute. If, what if you forget to pull this pin out? I won't work. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, why you, that's why your crew member has to be there to do that for you. So, so in Australia for IHRA, I'm sure it's similar to NHRA, uh, once a car goes over 140 mile an hour, although I heard that changing that to 150, um, you need a parachute. So. The sub 10 is what makes you need a cage. The, the 140 plus is what makes you need a shoot. Mm. And they've changed that to 150 now because there's better technology with yeah, brakes. Brakes are much better. And I go 161 on a everything pass. So um, yeah, I'm a little bit over 150. Yeah, yeah. So I need a shoot. The car will pull up, no problem, but the okay. shoot's not there to pull me up. The shoot's there to pull me up if my brakes fail. Right, right, right. So it's if a, I it's go- It's kind of a safety. Correct. So you have to pull it. I get. I got in trouble for not pulling it because <laughs> I forgot. But you have to pull it because their attitude is the reason you pull it is in case your brakes fail. Yeah, By the yeah. time you realise your brakes have failed, it's too, it's too late. I want to get to the track on a proper test day now. Our GDR festival was fun and all, but I was trying to run an event. I was yeah. trying to do a lot of things. I was very, very flustered to get out there, and sure. I was just happy to do it. At least I run for the crowd. Yeah. It was still a nine six at one fifty five on the on. I guess. Not all of the boost, but you know, <laughs> I was on a thousand. Nine six is pretty fast. Yeah, so I just <laughs> just wanted one test hit to get some data logs. I bogged it a little bit, very sticky track. But nine six at one fifty five in this car is like you can you can stuff up and it still goes that quick. Yeah. The goal cool. is to try and go like an eight 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 nine at one sixty, which the car has everything it needs to do it. It just gets at that level. It's just sometimes a little bit of setup, seat time, a little bit of seat time. Yeah. Get it get it ready for the tr uh, a highly prepped track. Yeah. Go to Kudamundra, It's easy. We know exactly what to do. But we've been there so many times. But when you got a prep track, it's the Sydney Dragway was, oh, the, it was the most prep track I've seen aside <laughs> from like an NHRA top fuel. Exactly. Prep. It was um, breaking everything, and everyone was bogging down. And <laughs> like it's like six and a half thousand two step was not enough in this car. But that's too much on the street. You know what I mean? Six so, and a half thousand. So we upped it to seventy two hundred. I was down there thousand. when that bog happened. And I was like, oh, not enough hours. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but you, you saw it. Like it bogs, and it still goes nine six one fifty five, and we still got another hundred and fifty horsepower to add to it. So. All right. Well, we got a bunch of stuff done. None of it was real difficult. No. But it was fun to actually get my hands on your <laughs> car. You've worked on my car, I've worked on your car now. And as you guys can see, we did get a little bit dirty. So, so it's got to be done, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a quick check over and a service. I think that's a pretty good testament to the fact that we've got 1150 horsepower. Engine's been gone for a couple of years. Yeah. It's never had to be a part at all to have multiple turbos and inlets on it, and it's still going and it's ready to go run an eight second pass. I can't wait to see it. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Throttle channel today. I hope you enjoyed this little segment here in Sydney, Australia with our friend Andrew from Motor Video. If you haven't already checked out his channel, do so. We'll leave a link in the description down below. Thank you guys so much again. Hit that subscribe button, leave us some comments. We'll see you in the next one.